No country in Europe has taken in more refugees per capita than Sweden in the past decade. But this open doors policy hasn't been followed up with a strategy of how to integrate new arrivals into society. The government believes that immigrant majority ghettos are on the increase and want to divide people into Nordic and non-Nordic in order to blend them back together again. But is this integration or discrimination or both? It's a quiet afternoon on the Rosengård estate, one of the places officially classed as a vulnerable area by the Swedish government. Its large immigrant population has made it a target for a new policy suggestion, putting a limit of 50% non-Nordic residents. For that I have been here 54 years here in Sweden, and in Rosengård 50 years. Before there was a lot of Swedish people. Vi bodde tillsammans och vi trivdes jättebra, liksom. Och just nu, jag trivs inte mer. För det är, som du sa, det är 90 procent invandrare som bor här. Bara 10 procent svenska. Om man ska, som jag sa, om man ska integrera. Om man bor i Sverige, då ska man kunna svenska först och främst. Hur ska man lära då svenska när man eh, liksom... Ingen svenska. Det är viktigt för våra barn och barnbarn. De växer. Man ska inte växa i sån samhälle. Liksom. Som jag sa, man ska integrera med svenska tillsammans. The policy is largely copied from Denmark, which aims to make sure that so-called non-Westerners make up no more than 30% of any district within the next 10 years. Sweden's mass immigration has been linked in studies with rising crime and a rising gang shootings. But improving integration by first dividing people up by background is not a question that liberal Swedes are used to wrestling with. It känns it känns konstigt att man ska behöva ja, bestämma att en viss viss mängd av att vi nordiska ska ja vara på ett viss plats. Men det är väl kanske kanske finns något något gott i det också att man ska interagera. Men jag, jag, jag tycker det är bra att eh, man, vi, vi kan leva alla tillsammans. Men jag vet inte om man ska ha restriktioner för det. On the Rosengård estate, not everyone feels that the large number of their fellow immigrants is a problem. To put people 50-50, if they don't live together, they don't understand each other. You see, that is not the solution. They have to look at uh, what is the solution in the society. What is the problem? Yeah, that is more important than to say, oh, we will put uh, 50, 50 people here, uh, like in Denmark, and the Denmark have failed, you see? Yeah, so in England, people live it where they want to live it, and they, there's no problem in the society. Immigration Minister Anders Ugerman's office didn't respond to a request for comment. Hey, oh, but he earlier told the Dagens Nyheta newspaper. The question always comes, where will people live then? But all cities have vulnerable areas, as well as 20 areas that are not vulnerable. Why should new immigrants always have to live in a vulnerable area? Socio-economic factors always have an ethnic dimension because about 75% of long-term unemployed have non-Nordic background. Prime Minister Magdalena Andersson backed up Ugerman's plans during her election campaigning this week but said that people wouldn't be forcibly moved as they are in Denmark. Researchers believe there are other measures that can combat problems in areas like Rosengård. Jag tror i vart fall inte att det här kan vara någon bärande del av en politik som ska eh, komma till rätta med ökad kriminalitet och fattigdom i de här utsatta områdena. Skola, fritidsverksamhet, arbete för befolkningen. Då behövs det mycket mer massiva samhälleliga insatser tillsammans med de boende. Sweden's open borders have led to immigration, crime and segregation being hot issues for voters. One question that remains is whether the political will to focus more on integration will last beyond the national elections on September the 11th.